just going to record this now. So the, the AIM pilot um, is intended to be a, a test of this methodology in Rwanda um, and to see if it can improve instruction. And uh, many schools have tested AIM, and I guess you could say I'm the first person to have tested AIM in my uh, situation, which was in a school in Canada um, where I found that my students were not learning French well. So I, it was my context to teach French as a second language and yours is English as a second language. So in our context, we have French every day for 30 minutes. And my students, even after seven years of language instruction, were not able to speak or read or write well, or and some of them not at all. So I was fairly shocked that this was the case when I started teaching in French uh, 30 minutes a day program. And um, because I thought, well, I learned French easily at high school, I did very well. And what I realized was that a lot of teachers who sometimes teach a language end up teaching the way they were taught, thinking that it will work for everyone. But I realized, and in talking with um, uh, educators in the field, I discovered that there have been many studies done on language acquisition in a traditional thematic or what we might call communicative approach. And there, they just, there just are no studies to show that great levels of proficiency develop in this context very rapidly. So I decided to do something and help my students. I just love languages and I was passionate about having my students learn French. So I developed something that we call it the Accelerative Integrated Methodology. It is highly accelerative. It rapidly helps students get a, a hold on the language, an entry into the language, and gets them speaking and understanding very, very quickly. And I'm going to talk today about how that happens. It's also integrated because before I taught language 30 minutes a day, I taught language in a context where, where we call, that we call immersion. And so I was teaching science and math and social studies and language arts and music and, and phys ed. Everything was in French all day to these English speakers. And I found the benefit of teaching language through another subject area. So in this uh, methodology, uh, I focus on teaching English, for example, through a literacy and arts-based approach. And um, I find that allowing children to learn the language through another subject area brings so much more to the teaching of, of language. It brings so much more meaning and so much more value to the teaching of language because they're learning other skills as well. AIM is also a methodology. So it, although you can use parts of the strategies and techniques we have, using AIM as a whole, it is a system that works where all of the individual parts work very, very well. They work synergistically together. They work very, very, very well to, so that it becomes very powerful. So I'm going to show a video now and hopefully it will stream well enough. If it doesn't, please let me know. Um, these are students. Uh, you'll see AIM classes using French, Spanish, English, Mandarin, and Japanese. So do let me know if you cannot see it well or hear it well. Perhaps we should turn off the Now, everyone, everyone will, will do, do the song of Parce que c'est la grand-mère de chaperon rouge et la mère part à chaperon rouge. Alors c'est ta grand-mère. To le monde est fantastique. La classe est tombe. Yo, tombe. Una persona en cor tan hel. Importante o importante? Importante. Importante. Entonces, yo no hablo.
Okay, so hopefully if you saw that well enough, you saw that AIM is a very active interactive methodology. We have the students speaking from the day they enter the classroom, the very first minute, and they're speaking the whole class long, getting lots and lots and lots of practice. And um, the CFR in Europe has come up with something that they call the can-do statements, and it's the focuses on authentic proficiency now in all of the guidelines around the world. And so what AIM has done well from the very beginning and continues to do is to develop on, is to uh, focus on the development of authentic proficiency so that students are learning to interact, to say what they need to, to say, to ask questions, to respond to questions, incomplete thoughts, to ask permission, to uh, request or um, to uh, apologize or to interact in any way that they need to in order to express themselves in a very natural uh, way as they would using their first language. So the Accelerative Integrated Methodology or AIM is a comprehensible input-based approach, which means that we do everything, everything we can, every strategy and technique in AIM is there and designed to ensure that students find a, a way to understand the language. As you probably noticed in the videos, we do a lot of gesturing. That's probably the key strategy to help students understand. So instead of, if you don't understand Mandarin, someone comes up to you and says, ni hao, and you don't know what that arbitrary sound means. Every language is just a series of arbitrary sounds, isn't it? So if, if someone comes up and says ni hao in, in, in uh, Mandarin and you don't understand, as soon as they go, ni hao, oh my goodness, now I know what that arbitrary sound means. And so for the children in AIM, we are providing these signals, these, these um, symbols to help them understand. And we have ev many other strategies in the methodology to help students understand. The faster they can understand, the more proficient they will become and more rapidly. So as I mentioned earlier, I wanted to focus on content. So it's a content and language, AIM has a content and language integrated learning focus as well, because we teach the language through an arts and literacy based approach. Students dramatize, students sing songs, learn dances, they learn to write stories. Once they begin to write, they learn the writing process, the editing process, the book publishing process, there is a lot involved in this methodology as students move through the grades. And the primary goal is to develop authentic proficiency. So AIM is not based on any one particular curriculum guideline. It was not developed to uh, respond to any particular guideline. However, AIM has been linked to many curricula around the world and always meets or exceeds those guidelines because it can help students develop much higher level proficiency of proficiency than we've seen before. What it does best is get students up and running in the language very, very early. And this is very important because we do not want to be spending years trying to learn the language and never getting there. Um, the faster students can get the foundation for language proficiency, the sooner we can then build on that uh, to have them become more and more proficient. It is a multidisciplinary approach. We have many studies that support how AIM works and why it works uh, based on brain-based research, and I'm happy to share those with you, and other studies that have shown that AIM is very successful. It's used all over the world uh, in many, many schools in Canada, many schools in Australia, um, schools in the Netherlands as well, the United States, um, and in other parts of the world as well, to a lesser degree. Um, so it began in 2004 with a few teachers, Edie and I, um, in independent schools in Canada, and now it's in many, many schools all over the world. Um, there, as I mentioned, a large percentage of those are in Australia and the Netherlands. It's wonderful news that a recent study out of the Netherlands rated students uh, the best classes there. They outperformed students in all language programs. And this, uh, this long-term study that was published a few years ago was in 2023, voted the best research paper of the year in the JESL journal in Europe. 
In October, just this past month, the Dutch students were tested and rated the best country, that Dutch AIM students of AIM classes were rated the best in the country in the 100th percentile. And we have students in various states in the United States who are winning national language competitions. Um, so um, I'm going to re review with you uh, fairly quickly. I won't go into a great detail, but the key components of the methodology with a few examples of each. So we have the gesture approach, the use of gesture to ensure that students are understanding what we are saying immediately, that we give them these as soon as we give them these arbitrary sounds, it could be buenos dias, ni hao, salud, hello, whatever the arbitrary sound is in whatever language, as soon as we attach this to it, the students understand. So we're attaching a, to the words that we want to teach a gesture. Now, this is great for understanding. It's a co great comprehensible input, but the unique aspect to AIM is that not only are the students understanding, but they are actually also producing the language, as you probably noticed in that video. The teacher gestures and the students do the speaking. So we flip on its end the normal way that the teacher does all the talking and the students sit and, and listen most of the time. Now we're giving students a lot of practice with the language, with guided language expression. So no matter what the age, the, the teacher can assist students in becoming confident, developing accent, practicing full and complete sentences in authentic language production. So what are the words that we're teaching to the students? Well, I've done a lot of research with my own students and through high frequency language studies and have come up with a language with, a, with what we call pared down language based on scope, reliability, and frequency, which is what a researcher called Holstein stated was the best way when one considers developing the best language curriculum, scope, reliability, and frequency are key. So when it comes to frequency, this is very key when, with respect to the pared down language. What are the words that little children need to know in order to express themselves? It, they need a lot of verbs. So we're going to teach a lot of verbs right off the bat. We're going to teach, of course, nouns, linking words such as and and for and with and but and and those are very key to language proficiency and lots and lots of questions and of course nouns that students need as well um how do we contextualize these uh words effectively apart from just our ongoing communication with gestures well i have found that the use of story and i noticed in your curriculum you mentioned this as well and and poems and raps are so important to anyone learning a language, but I think most particularly with the little ones. So they, because they love the imagination of the story, becoming the character, acting the character, talking about the character, dancing about the character, singing about the character. And because we have this one story that we focus upon over time, we are, we are giving the students a knowledge of words and sentences in context that then allow us to effectively help students develop an understanding and ability to manipulate the language, manipulate those words that are so familiar to them on their own, both orally and as they progress in writing. And we want students, of course, to transfer to spontaneous communication. And we want this to happen the very first day of class. And following that comes along the written. So, in the using the gesture approach, as you can see, sometimes the students will gesture, some and most of the time the teacher will do the gesture and the students will do the speaking. And if the students want to gesture along, we never say no. Some students love to do that well. But what is happening here is that the students are embedding um, the the language in different parts of the brain. They're visualizing the language through the signs. When they're kinesthetically moving their hands, they are embedding the language in a different part of their brain that's kinesthetic. So now we have two parts. And then we have the auditory input of the sound. So now they're embedding that this same word in another part of the brain. So this is why the students who are learning with AIM are able to recall vocabulary very rapidly because this language is embedded in different parts of their brain simultaneously. And 
we find that even after an entire summer off, after AIM, students come back the first day of September, it was like the last day of June. Um, so uh, there is a, a wonderful benefit to this multimodal, um, multi-sensory approach. Um, so let's just have a look quickly at what AIM looks like in English. So you can see that as we're working with the students, the students are not only listening to the question, they are producing the question. And this is very helpful because many of the interactions that students have with a teacher and with the other students in the class is to question. So they're getting hundreds, if not thousands of questions, uh, practice with questions as the teacher is working with them. Now, here is another uh, opportunity that you'll see where this teacher is just gesturing something spontaneously for the students to say. What is Claire doing? She is going over there to look for a pencil for me. Where is the pencil? The pencil is on the table. It is in a box. Here is a pencil. Thank you, Claire. You are very, very nice. So that is an example of a teacher working with the what? students um, to help them to speak spontaneously, talk about something that is just ongoing in class. I'm looking for a pencil. Where is it? Is It is on the table. It's in a box. Claire gives the pencil. Thank you very much. They're practicing in an integrated manner, not separated and decontextualized, but always contextualized in the context of what's going on in class. They're practicing these words together led by the teacher to help guide them as they become proficient. So again, just to repeat, what are the words that the teacher is gesturing? High frequency words, the, uh, the stem of the verb like want and go and come and uh, run and walk and jump, for example. Cognates if possible, and as I mentioned, very verb centered. Here is a kinesthetic review where kids are doing the gesturing of individual words, showing that they know what the words mean. Up, down. Up, down. Come, go. Come, go. Stay, stop. Stay, stop. Good, bad. Good, bad. Sing and dance. Sing and dance. Play with me. Strong, afraid. Strong, afraid. So what the children are doing there is that we're just running through a, a list of words that I want the students to practice and kinesthetically embed in their minds. And I hope you notice that the kids are saying these words as I am. I'm just saying them and the students are gesturing, showing me that they know the gesture. It's called a kinesthetic review. And I hope that you notice that we, in AIM, we incorporate a lot of expression. Studies have shown that when teaching something with an emotional component, we can help students learn up to 500 times more effectively. So through the dramatization of the stories that we have and the gestures and the expressiveness, we are helping students acquire the language effectively. So as I mentioned before, AIM is a literacy and arts-based approach. We work around one story. 
for a kit of 50 hours. So if you teach, say, an hour of language instruction or so a week, you would do one kit in a year or an hour and a half. I mean, there is a lot of flexibility there, but if you have at least an hour to, or so, or an hour and a half, you would be able to get through one kit a year. And the kit that we've created for you to test in Rwanda is the Little Cat Looks for a Family. Um, it's one of the most popular little stories and easiest stories that we have in French uh, for the little children ages four and five and six. So um, there are puppets so the teacher can dramatize. I love this quote from David Booth, who is at the University of Toronto, Ontario Institute for Studies and Education. And he says, children new to a language find in a context story for understanding. It's not word lists that command their attention, but the lives of characters that fill the tales they read or listen to. And how painful it must be for those children alien to a language to sit day after day without feeling connected to what is happening in the classroom. And yet through storying, how quickly they enter the activity, making sense of what is happening, building their own versions, listening, telling, retelling, talking about, reflecting upon, and responding. And I really believe that in a second language context, this is most important because the children have no other language. And so they depend on this story as their context for language. And because we give them this little story that is a theater piece that they can eventually act um, and perform, um, it, it becomes so familiar that we can then help them develop an ability to work with those words effectively. We're not exposing them to many, many different words. We're exposing them to a, a certain number of words. Now it is a selected vocabulary that's fairly large number of words because we need a minimum number of words to, to communicate. But um, we are there, it's very, very carefully chosen. So we have a storyboard so that the children can act out the play here with their puppets that you saw earlier. We have many different songs and raps and dances that recycle that pared down language throughout the entire kit. So through the songs, through the raps and the dances that we do. So come here now, I want to play. We will all have fun today. Or um, other puppet, other uh, songs like, uh, who wants to hand up the folders today? If you want to, then you say, I want to hand up the folders. It's true. So you can, you can, and you can too. So when we select the children, I'll just play one for you here, just as an example. The words, and then we sing. Turn the page and read again. And after that, we color with a friend. So that's a wrap around. Sorry, I didn't show the whole thing, but we, we sit together and read today. Put our finger on the words, and then we say. Turn the page and read again. And after that, we color with a friend. So we have different wraps that incorporate the, the in, to, put to music that the children have little hand movements to, and they can, and they, they hear the rhyme that's effective to helping students learn as well, as I am sure you know, as language teachers. And the children get really involved and just love to join in, especially the little ones. And we have other wraps, um, for example, this one. English class is finished today. We stop the activities and we say, who wants to collect the folders? Who? You can, you can, and you can too. So part of our work with the children is we make sure we have specific routines for handing out the folders, for requesting a folder, for handing a folder, for saying please and thank you as they hand them out every single day or hand out whatever it might be that the teacher would like them to hand out to the class. It might be a pencil, it might be a puppet, whatever it might be. We have a routine. We have a lot of linguistic routines that gain, allow students to practice in a comfortable and con, develop a lot of confidence. And, and a, very predictable. This very gives students a feeling of security and predictability. We also teach, of course, the basic vocabulary that one would expect. 
letters of the alphabet, parts of the body, the numbers, the family, the colors, and prepositions. We make sure those are incorporated and threaded throughout what we do with the children in our kit. And here we have an example of a teacher uh, say, telling the students that they're going to be speaking only in English today. So there we go. First, you must follow the English. Sorry about that. Hello, everyone. Now the class begins. How are you today? Everyone say, I am well, or I am not well. Okay, so we have a little entry routine that actually Edie came up with about we take, open our head, take out our own language, put it in our pocket, and, and, uh, and then we put English in our heads and we close our heads and uh, speak in English today. And uh, of course, as I mentioned earlier, through all of these activities, our goal from the very first day is to help students transfer to spontaneous speech and eventually to creative writing. Um, so through the language, we have very scaffolded language manipulation activities that helps build that ability to write as students develop those skills in their first language. But because AIM is so successful in the development of oral proficiency, we find that the transfer to written language uh, proficiency develops uh, quickly. So I'm going to just show you uh, some samples of my age six students in French um, who have one year of French with two kits um, and they were able to write a story retelling of the story that we worked on for that kit. So what the children are asked to do is to retell the story both orally with a partner and then also do it with a partner in writing. And so what they must do is retell the story that we know very well that we've worked on throughout this kit and they must retell it in their own words. They do not repeat any sentence from the original story as it stands. They must reformulate. So it, it helps the students learn how to use circumlocution, which all new speakers need to learn when in a uh, when learning a new language, because we might have this much vocabulary in our own language and this much in the new language. Well, we have to only use this much. So it helps the students learn to reformulate their words. And so they retell the story. And what it does for literacy skills, it helps students to learn how to embellish a story because we do invite students and do a lot of modeling to help students understand how to add detail to a story. So this is my age six student who wrote this story. And then the other stories that we work on in AIM is what happens next? So um, what happens after the story ends? So let's say they're working on the three little pigs. Well, the three little pigs chase the, the wolf away, but he's still hungry. So what, what can we do? How does this story continue? So the children think of ideas and we write a story as a whole class and then in partners, they go off and they write the story, a different one on their own. I don't know if you speak French, I'll just read a couple of pages. Après que le, just in case you speak French. <laughs> Après que le loup sort de les trois petits cochons, il va à la maison et dort et se réveille et marche à l'endroit. That's a grocery store, he's still hungry. Et court et marche, Monsieur Lou est très fou. Et content, le loup frappe à la porte de la fille amie. So he goes off and he goes to get some food at a store and he knocks on the door of his friend's house and she decides she wants to play with him and 
And so they go out and they're, they're kind of afraid of the pig. So he says, j'ai peur, uh, j'ai peur de la fille amie, je, elle court à sa maison. So she runs back to her house and je veux faire une fête, I want to have a party. So they end up having a nice little party together and they, they end up eating because they go to Loblaws, which is the grocery store. And here, I love this, ça c'est délicieux, not spelled very well, but just remember, it's only 30 minutes a day of French. Um, and so the children, and it's just their second year of French, these, these two children. So, you know, we don't expect perfect spelling, but what we can see here is that the students are able to speak. If they couldn't, they could not be writing this if they weren't able to speak. So we do have a lot of testimonials from many, many different people in different parts of the world who've implemented AIM. This person happens to be a professor of, professor of English as a second language who teaches adults with AIM, who wrote a lovely testimonial. Uh, he, he works with uh, immigrants to, Can to the United States in uh, southern New Hampshire. Um, and let's have a look at some other testimonials here. If I had to choose, you know, one thing that distinguishes AIM classrooms from more typical core French classrooms, it's the level of emotional investment that kids have in the process and the fun that they're having. And again, that's fuel that drives the learning process. So they're, they're very keen and they can apply. I guess the most um, remarkable point is that they can apply everything or a lot of what they've learned in a context, in everyday life context. What we didn't anticipate would happen was that students in grade four with a sibling that it was in grade seven were going home at night and actually speaking French in sentences at the dinner table. And the feedback was very impressive from the parents that all of a sudden their kids were having conversations that they couldn't follow in French at the dinner table. Well, that was it's very interesting, <laughs> but at least the, the, the students are taking the, the language home and making it part of who they are and feeling confident enough and being capable enough to use the language with their siblings outside of the context of the classroom. If I... Isn't that what we want as language teachers to be sure that what we're teaching becomes really meaningful and becomes part of the students? We have thousands of testimonials from teachers all over the world who say such thing as, things as AIM is the most effective and fun language learning program I know. My students and I were able to stay in the target language from the first day and grow our ability to engage in critical thinking out loud and in writing with this amazing program. What started out in kindergarten and grade one is plays about farm animals and lost cats, like the little cat looks for a family, turned into being in, able to engage with texts about climate change, dangers of landmines, and so on and so on. Um, others have said, I've never come across a better second language program. My students are engaged, they're interacting in the target language, can stay in the target language for the whole period, feel confident. Um, parents have said that, <laughs> you know, my son's French improved tremendously, he enjoyed working hard in the online portal. Um, uh, we, we anyway, we have many, many testimonials that are on our on our website that I'm happy to send a link for you to have a look at. And we set actually Edie sent a link to Angelique so she could send that over to you if you wish. Um, anyway, I, I won't read all of these, but uh, this one last one is interesting. I found AIM a, in a few years ago in a desperate search. I taught for years and longed to see my students attain some level of proficiency in the target language and was dissatisfied with all the methods that I had tried but I did not feel like I had the time to write my own curriculum. Now that I've used the AIM method, I would not teach any other way. My current elementary students are speaking more proficiently than my high school students who were taught using traditional methods. AIM makes language learning enjoyable for students, but also pushes them to think critically and express themselves creatively. The curriculum guide is so teacher friendly and there's so many resources available to teachers. Has brought much, AIM has brought much joy to what I do and seeing this, my, this progress my students are making is a teacher's dream. Okay, so now in the next, now that I've sort of given you, given you a bit of an overview of AIM, I'm going to show you how I've made alignments with the first two uh, um, sets of curriculum guidelines for ages three, four and four, five. I have made alignments for ages five, six as well with this kit. Um, so I will show you, but I didn't do it all because I, I just didn't think we would have time to go through it all, but it is in the program guide. 
um, for you to have a look at um, at your leisure. You can go and have a look. So <clears throat> for the syllabus for grade one English begins with um, the subtopic area listening and speaking. So the children are responding to simple greetings, farewells, self-introduction. Um, they greet at different times of the day. They use appropriate expressions for greeting. They introduce themselves. Um, they uh, demonstrate gestures of friendliness, asking, how are you? I'm fine. I think you saw that. The teacher's saying, how are you today? The teacher gesturing for the students to practice that, develop <clears throat> farewells as well. So this is in AIM where on the right-hand side where we do this, they say goodbye, they say hello, they introduce themselves. And I'm going to show you specifically where this happens <clears throat> in some of the activities. Now, the activities that I'm showing you here give you a sampling of where you'll see it in the kit, in the activity. But AIM is a holarchical approach. Once we introduce a word, we don't use it for a while and then leave it and move on to some more words and then teach those and then move on to some more words and then move on and keep moving on to different words. The way AIM works is that we teach words and then we continuously review those words from the step one kit to the step two kit to the step three kit. So the students are introducing and practicing greetings throughout the entire step one kit every day they will practice greetings. And then into the step two kit, they will continue to practice them, but we'll make it a little more complex. Maybe talking a little bit in, in a more complex way about the, how they feel. So starting in the most basic way in the step one kit, we show the children, for example, in introducing ourselves activity, um, my hello, my name is, I am well, um, or I'm not well, or, um, and, uh, and the teacher repeats this and guides the students through the speaking and helping them to say this as they begin to learn those words. We have um, entry routines that practice those words. So again, in a rap and rhythm and rhyme, we practice those words as well because that's very effective um, to helping students learn. Um, we uh, learn counting in that in, in those guidelines, you uh, mentioned that it is important that student, students learn how to count with objects. So uh, we take the puppets, something familiar, and we count with the puppets. So we have one, two, three, four, five puppets on the second page there. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five puppets here. And we introduce the story. And we won't just do this once. We will review and practice counting puppets or counting pencils or counting books or counting our all the heads in the class throughout the methodology. And it's all done in the AIM way where the teacher is gesturing the words and the kids are saying it together. You also mentioned in the guidelines that we want students to understand how to request things. So you can see down in the little box here, give the, for example, red pencil, please. I want that, please help me. I want help. I can color, you know, these are things that we, we are helping the teacher understand and showing them the gestures and when they can say those things for the students. Now, when it comes to leaving, we have greeting vocabulary and leaving vocabulary. So we have our leaving vocabulary, goodbye, my friends, thank you um, for the class, um, handing out the folders, collecting the folders, who wants, English class is finished today. We stop the activities and we say, who wants to collect the folders as we did that before? And we have students collect. And then again, um, they're practicing those same words. Here we have a little. Hello, the class begins and that is fine. And we speak in English all the time. I like the class a lot, and that is true. I like to speak in English with all of you. Teacher will gesture to support and help students say those little rhymes. We have another one, a simpler one. Hello, my friends, hello. Hello, my friends, hello. Hello, my friends, hello. Hello, my friends, hello. Hello, my friends. Hello. Now we do the same.
same with goodbye. So the children practice goodbye the same way. And the teacher is gesturing some of the words to, to guide the students. So now we have uh, the subtopic er uh, area, listening and speaking, responding to simple oral instructions. So <clears throat> absolutely, AIM is there to help students understand the meaning of instruction. That's it, our entire goal throughout the entire methodology, no matter what kit. We want students to listen attentively, to interpret our face, facial expression and gestures. We give a lot of facial expression and a lot of gestures. That's all part of the methodology to help students understand. Demonstrating obedience, politeness, and inviting students to do to, to carry out simple instructions like jump or come here or close the door, open the door, um, close your eyes, open it, your eyes, give me the book, please. I want to hand out the activity. All of these things are incorporated extensively throughout the step one kit. Um, and so here we have, for example, in this activity seven, this is water. Oh, I want to go to the toilet. Um, you say, I want to go to the toilet, please. Or here we have um, something that the students might want, a piece of paper. I want that. So give, give, give that, please. I want that. And thank you. Thank you very, very much. So we're, we're doing this throughout the kit, not only in this activity, but throughout the kit. As soon as the students learn a word or a, a concept like handing out or thanking or giving, we use that for the rest of the kit. We don't divide words into themes where we work on a certain set of words and then we're done with those. Work on another set of words and we're done with those. We're, we are constantly reworking. So opening and closing, door, mouth, touch, head, eye, excellent work are the words we're introducing in this activity. So stand up, jump to the door. You all say, say, jump to the door. So we're all saying it together and one student's jumping to the door. Open the door, please. Close the door. Very, very good. And then we'll ask students to touch the door, touch the eye, touch the mouth, and so touch the head and so on. And if, here we have those here. Open the mouth, close the mouth, open the eyes, close the eyes, touch, touch a head, a head, touch the head, open, close, open, close, listen, the door, the book, the mouth, the eyes. Excellent. They're all practicing these, the gestures for these words together um, as the teacher says them. Um, <clears throat> now moving on to, uh, again, subtopic area, listening and speaking, use vocabulary related to the day and parts of the body. So here we have, um, uh, we do a lot of work where we can talk about our <laughs> parts of the body, our head, our shoulders, our hands, our uh, eyes, ears, ah, oh my goodness, eyes, ears, and hands, and knees and toes. And we can, of course, sing the song and do um, gesture and kinesthetic reviews where we might say, um, look at the head, look at Mary's head, look at John's feet, look at um, Karen's eyes. And so we're all looking at, at something or look at the book or touch our head or touch our hand or touch our feet. And then we can, of course, play um, the head and shoulders rhyme, knees, head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, and so on. So um, that's a very fun activity for the, the students as well. So we are working a lot in this kit on on that and friendship and family, as you mentioned as well, is very, very important. And the friendship and family component comes in through the story and working with each other. AIM is a very cooperative learning-based approach where we all work together, we all speak together. The shy students speak who would never speak because everyone's speaking together. The weak students who, who might be very tentative and need lots of repetition get lots of repetition. And the students who want to speak all the time, they speak all the time because everyone is invited to speak all the time as the teacher gestures. So they all, we're all working together and we make sure that, that we give students lots and lots of praise. Very, very good, excellent, fantastic, bravo. We have give lots of gestures for praise and we're constantly doing that 
to make sure the students all feel very included <clears throat> and supported as they learn the language. So I mentioned before the whole archical design of AIM, and I think it's very important to keep this in mind, <clears throat> that unlike a hierarchy where we, we would learn something and then learn the next and learn the next and learn the next, AIM is a whole archy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we start with a, a core vocabulary that is very high frequency and very physical and very easy to learn. And so we'll learn the, the teacher will learn the gestures for these words, maybe the words as well, if the teacher doesn't know them all yet. The teacher will teach those words to the student and the gestures. And that's all the teacher will use with the students for that day, nothing else. The next day, the teacher will learn the words and gestures for the next set of words and gestures to be taught and we'll teach those to the students and we'll review the words and gestures from the previous day. The next lesson, the teacher will learn some more words and gestures. We'll teach those words and gestures to the students and we'll review everything from the previous days. So as you can see, we're building up while going back and reviewing. And this is why AIM works so well. We must ensure this pleasant repetition and ongoing um, <clears throat> practice with those words that we introduce at the very beginning of a kit, they must be reused and, and recycled in different contexts because it's only by presenting a word in different contexts do, word, do children develop word concept and understanding of the word. <clears throat> so the structure of a kit <clears throat> makes it very easy to implement. What we see is that, <clears throat> excuse me, from one kit to a next, we're going to include the information from the first kit in the second kit, so that, e or, or from the first activity in the second activity. So what we're doing is continuously building a strong foundation for the students to be successful as they move up into the higher uh, kits, those larger dolls that we've so that it, just like those Russian dolls, everything that we do with AIM, when we get to the, the biggest Russian doll, we're going to have everything that we did before contained in it. So now looking at the syllabus for, for ages four to five, um, we have listening to stories and participating in singing short stories and rhymes. Um, so of course, we, I've already shown you that we do this, but I'll show some more of it. We sing songs and raps related to the themes that you are requesting such as friendship, family, home, animals, and food. We recite raps related to classroom activities. We participate in games and other um, activities related to those themes. <clears throat> we absolutely encourage students. The, we're always working together. We're, we're all encouraging students to understand how important it is to have a family. That's what that first kid is all, what that first story is all about. Finding a family, being happy and being appreciative of having a family. Um, so we have familiar animals um, that I worked on selecting with Angelique and Anatolie. And then we have various, I've added this in a work, a little more work with food. So um, the, we'll be talking about that a little more in the kit um, and threading that throughout the questions that we ask the children about the story. What do the animals like to eat? What do you like to eat? And naming these different food foods. So this is what the big book looks like. This is just one page. It is a full length play for little kids, um, but very repetitive. So very easy for the little ones to learn. Um, and we have the poster, the simple poster of the, 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 the core nucleus family. And then we have a bigger poster with the extended family, if teachers would like to share that as well. So, so children learn a simple story about friendship and family. So here we have the activity in the teacher's guide of the little cat looks for a family introduction and review, I'm sorry. So um, we all say the story together and we, we, we count the puppets again, perhaps. And we talk about this is a dog, this is the cat. And we invite the children to hold up the, the puppets and move them for the whole class so everyone gets involved. Um, and we read the story together. Even if the children can't read, we're, we're pointing to the words, the different, the different words are in different co colors. So we, we point that out to the children. This is purple. This is brown. This is green. I see the purple words. 
for the little cat. So the little cat's words are in purple. And so as the teacher gestures all of these words, the children are practicing saying them. So for example, at the very end, the dog says that the cat can or cannot stay with the dog. So we, inv we invite the students to think about the story, ask the questions with the teacher as the teacher gestures, and then they answer what the dog says. And they can guide the students with the complete thought response. We ask the children respond in complete thought so we can maximize their vocabulary. So the theme of food is contextualized within the questions around the story. So um, for example, the different foods that we can teach are here along the side. And then we can ask questions, the little cat wants a family. So we could gesture the little cat wants, a, and then we'd hold up the family card, family or wants a carrot. And so the children say that question and then the children answer, the little cat wants, uh, and then we'd hold up the poster family. And we encourage the children to constantly be thinking about, about what the teacher is asking and how to respond in a complete thought. Using all the words and reusing all the words, we can incorporate, if there's a particular word a teacher wants to teach that perhaps is not in the kit, you can ask a question using it. For example, let's say they want to teach, oh, I don't know, um, the word, oh, I'm trying to think of a word you might, the stick, for example. Maybe we don't have stick. So um, you could say, the little cat wants a stick or wants a family. So, you know, you can always incorporate other words if you wish. However, I do recommend. I do, I would advise that less is more. If you give students, especially young ones, too much variety, they'll be lost and you won't get anywhere. Whereas if you stay very closely to this high frequency vocabulary and ensure that it's repeated enough, you will find incredible proficiency development and understanding of the language. So again, another activity, children respond to questions relating to the theme. This is a big boy or this, a uh, this, so start again. This is a big boy or this is a little boy. The sentence down here at the bottom. Um, yeah, so asking questions about what things are to start with are very simple. These are the simplest questions. And then we move on to more difficult questions. We have two levels of questioning, total and partial. And for the little ones, we use a lot of total, where we give the or, this or that. So the students are in the, when they say the question, are not only practicing the one correct answer, but the alternate too. Big, little. This is a big boy, or this is a little boy. The answer is this is a little boy, but they practice the word big in the question, which is great. So then we have songs and dances where we recycle the words from the story, where the students get an opportunity to see a, a basic retelling in rhyme for the first time of the story. Let's hear a little bit of this. And we also have a dance that goes along with it. So students are going to be dancing, as they're singing this song with the teacher. This is the story of the little cat. This is the story of the little cat. He wants a family who can help him. He wants a family. In our dance, we'll walk back and forth and not do all the gestures. That would be too much. We just pick out gestures like story and little cat and wants, wants, and who, who. So it makes it simple for the little ones to be able to follow the dance, but 
they do absolutely love it. And then, of course, as in your guidelines, you were suggesting that children um, might make puppets or work with puppets relating to the theme. So um, we have a little wrap about um, take a puppet and I say, I want to color today. I cut it out. And after this, look, now I have finished. So the children will say this little wrap before, and it does come with the, the music, but I know our time is a bit limited, so I'll just move forward. Um, and then, so we, it, you did, did recommend in your guideline that children might color, might, might match images. So we have those activities where they can match the images. They perhaps can, if the teacher can do this, act, can the teacher will model all these activities with the whole class and only students who can read would do it individually, or you could put it in a center and cut out the words and perhaps the kids can match it with the help of the teacher. Um, they can match these uh, words together. Um, we also have these uh, word cards that students can make up sentences with or simply match those uh, you know, images together, as you can see in this picture here. Um, students working with uh, the little cat looks for a family in French. Um, and then I think this is the last one here where we are understanding polite language and oral communication, understanding how to say I'm sorry, thank you, happy birthday, please give me, I want, and, and uh, how to say no sometimes, no thank you, and apologize. Um, so we do this a lot throughout the kit, and we do dedicate certain activities to it, um, where in this activity we're learning, oh, if you push by accident, you say, oh, no, I am sorry, and thank you, you're welcome, thank you, you're welcome, we play with that a little bit, and um, taking the pencil and write, and oh, I cannot write with this pencil and asking for another pencil. And so we're learning those words and those appear throughout the entire kit. Again, mentioning the handing out routine. Where is the name of the student? Student says, I am here. And the person handing out says, here is your folder or book or paper or pencil or whatever it might be. And the student says, thank you. And the other one says, you're welcome. <clears throat> so we have a lot of that throughout the kit. Saying no sometimes. Well, the characters do say no to the little cat in the story that we practice over and over again. And finally, the cat finds someone who does say yes to him. Um, and uh, yeah, so here we have other examples of the handing out routine presenting wishes, saying the date, responding to commands and praise is found throughout the kit. In our entry routines, we'll say happy birthday on everyone's birthday and we show the teachers the gestures for that. Lots of how are you when we do our entry routines. Um, lots of responding to commands as we ask the teacher, the students to go here, go there, come here, write or draw or sing or dance or jump. We're always inviting the children to do different activities such as here, jump, 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 stop. Very, very good. Walk, walk, walk. Very, very good. <laughs> and so on. And so basically, um, that is my presentation for the day uh, with respect to the, the guidelines here. We do have a lot of training options for teachers. This is typically what we offer to our, our language teachers outside of um, uh, the Rwandan context, um, but certainly we are happy to create uh, various levels of training for you through to certification. This is just to let you know that that is an option there. So a little bit more than an hour, but uh, I'm sure it's the end of your day, so you're a little tired, but um, I don't know. Do you have any questions at all or comments on what you saw? Oh, I see a, a hand up at the back there. Angelique, perhaps you could come to this microphone or, or closer to the, <coughs> excuse me, to the computer and um, and take that question. Oops. 
Sorry, if someone is speaking, I can't quite make it out. My apologies, I can't hear. Oh dear, is that you, um, Anatoly, perhaps? Yeah. So, yes, it's not possible they, to hear you. Is it possible to write it in the chat box? That would be a good idea, Edie. Yes, if you could write it, that would be helpful. I think they're all still muted. Uh, Alice is not, or sorry, I think it's Anatoly is not. I think it is clear now. Oh, yes, I can hear you now. Oh, so. Let's now see Esther, please. Yeah, uh, good afternoon again. Uh, I guess in Canada it's in the morning, so good morning. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good afternoon. Um, yeah, thank you very much for for PIA presentation. So my name is Nancy Kistel Mugwaneza, and I'm from Humanity and Inclusion, working in this project of Urezi Wachu. I had an opportunity to, to, to go through the whole process when we started um, the conversation about, uh, with M about this um, interactive tools. And also I had an opportunity to participate in the training when it happened here in Rwanda. But um, I, I don't know, I, I'm here with my colleague who also had an opportunity to participate in the training, but we were triggered a little bit on how to include children with different type of disability, especially for those who have uh, out of hearing and speaking problems because uh, most of them, they use sign language, and this is just as so uh, we were asking ourselves if this can't be a little bit confusing for them because they are relying on sign language. Yeah, they are, they are, we are using uh, gestures, and some of them are a little bit different from the sign language. So this was the first question. Mm -hmm. And another one was, if a child is blind, totally blind, is it this going to be really effective for the child? Because for example, I was with my colleague who is totally blind <laughs> and he was lost. During the, 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 the training, he was lost because he couldn't see the gestures we were doing or just sitting there and at some point he could even lose the attention to follow. So we were asking ourselves, is it this also including children with disabilities or maybe it's just for, it's, it's for children who doesn't have disability. So this was my question. Thank you very much for Thank the you. question. Thank you. Yes, um, I, did, I did work with a sign language uh, consultant and ensured that I changed some of the signs that we, or gestures that we use in AIM to be the same or very similar to students or children who are are uh, who sign already. So, um, I, although you know, if there's a slight difference, I don't think I wouldn't worry too too much about it. It perhaps is like a child listening to a a speaker of another language with a bit of an accent. They'll still understand. It's just that it's a little bit of an accent, a slight difference in in the gesture i don't i don't think it will uh be detrimental at all i in fact children can learn completely new languages which is what we're doing here um so even if every sign was completely different they'd just be learning a di different set of gestures um as one would learn a different language spoken language but i but i assure you that um, i did work with the sign language person and and we shared the gestures of AIM and I, I did make changes. So hopefully you do find that, that many of them are very, very similar. So we'll be predictable for those students who already sign. And in terms of students who are hard, uh, who are not able to see, um, yes, I mean, 
I have to say we do our very best to help st all students. Um, there are have been modifications. I did have a student who could not see well in one of my classes. And what happened was she would sit, I would wear a black glove so she could see my gestures more easily. And she would sit at a screen. So there were modifications made by the school. She would sit at a screen so she could see with with very strong glasses <clears throat> what um what i was uh gesturing <clears throat> with my black glove now that of course is not going to be helpful if someone is completely blind what i might recommend is if there is someone to assist the child there who is blind to help the child form the gestures sometimes i mean it is very difficult I mean, I'm not sure what you do currently with students who are blind when you're teaching English. Do you have a strategy that perhaps we could use and combine with AIM um, that might be effective? A teacher, but... <laughs> I know we train teachers on how they can handle children who are blind. Mm -hmm. Okay, if they are not in their special schools, of course, because in their special schools, they have their own methodologies they can use. Oh, but good. if a child is in an inclusive school, we encourage teachers to use more concrete objects. When they are introducing new terms, they can have uh, concrete objects. For their children to touch, to smell, you know, to use to use other senses that can help the child to, you know, to 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 link the concept with the the object. Yeah, this is how we encourage teachers to do. Well, and of course, yeah, talking, really, you know, things yeah. like that. Yeah, exactly. That so, sounds wonderful. So certainly, you could do that with aim. You know, and 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 because aim is so physical. If there is someone to assist the child who's blind, have them do a full kinesthetic response. You know, get up and uh, don't just do the gesture. They could get up and jump or assist the child to do the gesture with the, with the teacher. Um, so that, you know, help the students walk and, and run, do the run motion or do the listen motion or do the look motion or do the open motion and close motion and uh, and speak or say whatever we're doing if there is someone to assist the student to do the gesture alongside that would be just wonderful and of course objects are nice or invite the student to just get up when it's possible and move the whole body in response okay. Is are there any other questions at all? Okay, thank you. So my name is Jean Paul. I'm a disability inclusion facilitator. Uh, in the always watch project uh, as a homes and the community uh, so i'd like to to suggest if possible can we harmonize uh is it allowed to harmonize the gestures use it with sign language so as to make so uh, as to include those children with hearing impairment as you said um some gestures are similarly common with the one used by children with hearing impairment. So can we try to harmonize to make sure that all signs or gestures used are the same as, as used as, for example, uh, American Sign Language or Ghana Sign Language due to the context? Mm -hmm. Yes, thanks for the question. Yeah. Many teachers do ask that question. The issue is we're not teaching sign language to the children, we're teaching a language and we're having the students, we're not teaching the students to sign, we're teaching the students to speak the language. And because sign language sometimes incorporates a lot of different words in one sign, <clears throat> they and yeah. not include any grammar like the ing gesture for 
I am walking. I don't think there's a separate gesture for am and is and are. And we need a gesture for the S on the runs. And we need a gesture <clears throat> um, for the past tense, de. And we need <clears throat> other gestures that, that just, and the syntax of sign language is different as well. So we're, t it's, you, you know, it, we're trying to, to meld something that is not easy at all to meld. Um, as I say, when I, I looked at sign language and it simply does not have enough words to give me all the words with, for one gesture, one word per gesture. There is often just one word for a variety of different meanings. So, I mean, if you decide that you would like to change the gesture I used for, say, um, girl to a different gesture, of course you are welcome to do that. You are welcome to change any gestures that you would like, oh. but you will need to have one gesture per word. Uh, seeing me clearly, are you seeing me now? Okay. Uh, we can we can hear you, but you uh, are not seeing me. Uh, we can hear you, but uh, there's no video. I think you're speaking through Alice's computer. Is that right? No. Okay, go on. So, uh, I think now you are seeing me. Yes. You are looking at me now. Yes. So, for example, when we say, uh, I, in Uganda sign language only, American sign language, you can say, I, I am, then walking, as you, you, you right. sign walking. Right. Yes. Yes. When you harmonize for any context, this can be helpful for all runners. If he is a class who has a child with hearing impairment, so a child can learn like others. So how do you gesture am? Huh? Um, so for the sentence, I uh, am walking, how do you gesture I? Can I say uh, I? How do you gesture am? I, how do you gesture am? Um, Am sorry, I can't. I am. How do you gesture? Am I'm sorry, could you just lower your screen a little bit like this? And then I can see, yes, if you could just lower the screen or perhaps stand, yes. So I is this, and then what is the gesture for am? Because the children have to say am, yeah. I, yes, you can say uh, I am. This is am? I, one finger. Just one finger. Yes, we say I. 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 Yeah. I. Yes. What is am? Yes, am. Yes, like this. Okay. And yes. walking. But say my name. Let me say my name. Okay. My, my name. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My. My yeah. okay, that was your, that was the yes, same gesture you used for am. Yes, my this is the same as my, my yes, my, my. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, is yes. it name is the same as you say? Yes, name, so, name, I did name here, but it's the same gesture because I okay, put it on the name tag. Yes, yeah. what I. What I, what I would like to get at is, if this is am and this mm -hmm. is my, what, yes. how will the children know whether to say am or my? We need a different gesture for am. Uh, for American Sign Language, as you, they say I am. Yes. I am. Yes. But that's the All difference when I we're... Say. And that's the difference when we're teaching a new language. We need mm -hmm. one gesture per sound so we need so, i and then we need am uh -huh. or you and then are or he or sorry i don't know what i use for he for 
So anyway, uh, uh, the boy, the boy is. So we need those link, those little words that do not occur in sign language. They il they eliminate those because they're just in sign language. They just get to the core sense. My so they just do my name, Wendy. So they don't use is, but we need is because we don't want children to be saying my name, Wendy, or my name, Edie, or my name, Jen. We don't, we have to have is, and we have to have are, and we have to have am, and we have to have, um, we have to have run, and we have to have runs as well. And so, and then we need a different gesture for am as to my, and we need a different gesture for me as well. So because each word is an arbitrary different sound, the gestures, every gesture has to be unique so that children know what sound to produce associated with that gesture. Otherwise, Oedi, you have something to say to add? So I want to add on is this. So maybe I want to make the, to harmonize those common words to make the same sign as the one the children with writing impairment used in their classroom. Okay, well, if you could, what, I'd yes. be happy to change whatever uh, gestures you would like. If you would like whatever words in that pared down language list that you feel are not close enough to your gestures, we can definitely change those ones. Yeah. Yeah, we can definitely change those ones. Um, I try. I did work with the with the your sign language expert, and and we came up with something that worked. I mean, some of the signs are not in the sign language just because they aren't used, like am and is and are. So you know, we had to add those in. But but the other ones, if something is not close enough that you would like, then we can definitely do that for you. Get you. Just okay. let me know which ones they are and send me a little video clip of the one of the what the gesture you would like it to look like and then we'll we can refilm those gestures. I think it's important to add Wendy that if they can't if they can't say the words they're not going to be able to write them. Okay, so they oh, need no. every word to be able to oh, yes. to be able to be to be able to be correct. Absolutely. Um, when they're speaking when they're writing. So that's uh, that's what is possibly you need every single least. word. Yeah. Good. Whereas sign yeah. language yeah. does not include every single word, and certainly does not include all of the different aspects of grammar. So mm -hmm. can I just add that um, we are teaching the students to speak. We're not teaching them. We're using the gestures to get them to speak. So the gestures are not a separate language. Like it, we're not working um, against. It's either American Sign Language or the aim gestures. The aim gestures are, we have to understand that the gestures are just a tool hmm. to accelerate the, the um, acquisition of the words, embed them so that the students no longer have to do the gestures. So the students oh. don't have to necessarily yeah. do the gestures. Oh. And oh. so I think maybe um, that might be a little bit of a uh, misunderstanding is that the students will not be gesturing they don't have to gesture if they don't want to, but the the gestures, the aim gestures are just a tool to the acquisition of language proficiency. And so when the students have that language acquired, when it's embedded inside so that you no longer, you Wendy can just gesture and the students, she doesn't have to say anything and the students speak then you know that those words are internalized. So I think that's a little bit, we have to make that crystal clear that the students will not be gesturing all of the time. The gestures are just a tool. So they will be acquired and then dropped and then more added. Once the, those words are acquired, they're dropped. They, but we revisit them, like Wendy said, we revisit the gestures all of the time because we want the students to be sp speaking and practicing the language all of the time. Uh, and that's the tool of using gestures. But once they become more advanced in their language proficiency, it is not always necessary. For example, after their second or third year or whatever, um, it is not necessary to use gestures all of the time in all of the activities. Mm -hmm. Only when at the beginning stages of the first year, you're going to be gesturing all of the time. So that is really, um, it has to be made very clear that the gestures are not a language in itself. 
Yeah, they are just a tool to ensure that students are getting a lot of practice with oral language development. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for this wonderful presentation. Uh, my comment is about uh, how we can uh, introduce sign language teaching while you are also teaching English language. I think this one can be stressful for those learners because uh, we know that when we are teaching these learners uh, at the early age, it should be better just to make development natural and enjoyable. So when you bring these two components, teaching sign language and teaching language, it cannot be easy for these learners to master those two components. Oh no, we're not teaching sign oh. language. Sign language is the, the, the gestures is not, we're not teaching sign language. We're only helping them understand, helping them be engaged, helping them to feel confident because we have these gestures that help them to understand. We are not expecting children will learn sign language, not at all. It's just a tool. Just, I don't have any problem. For gestures, I don't have any problem because uh -huh. they help others to understand more the mm. content. Yes. But it comes to using these gestures as someone from humanitarian inclusion is saying, this cannot work. This cannot work because every word has to be signed. signed. Uh, but when it is about the gestures, it is like role playing. Yes. This is understandable. Oh, For me, yes. if you are using gestures as they are, because even those runners who do not have disabilities are also uh, use, using those gestures for the first time. So no, the teacher is so, gesturing. The teacher does the, most of the gesturing. It's not the children. Just to get the kids talking and understanding. Um, and really, we have thousands of teachers all over the world who use this from anywhere from age four, three, four, right through to high school. And I can, I'm happy to share the testimonials of the success that they are having with this. Um, I mean, I myself and Edie and Jen, we've all experienced how incredibly engaging and gives feeling a sense of security and 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 an achievement amongst the children. I can guarantee you. I mean, but you really just have to give it a try. I mean, if you could be willing to just give it a try with even two classes, one class even, just to see. I mean, you saw the children in Madagascar using it for French. Um, Little kids, five-year-olds, um, doing La Poule Maboule, which is a Chicken Little, um, one of our primary series, just like the little cat in, in English. But I mean, I think you won't know until you give it a try. And I do understand that this looks different. And some people do look at it and say, oh, this is just so different. I don't even know how it can work. But the only way you'll find out is if you give it a try. That's all I can say. <laughs> Really, they're just so I, the, the, gestures, just... the gestures are also used uh, in the same way as you might use an image card or, yeah. a, a, you know, a, a, a picture. I mean, they've done studies in in the recall of vocabulary and, you know, they've tested kids by using gestures and then teaching them through the gestures, the vocabulary through the gestures, and then testing them two weeks later. And of course they all scored high and then they, they did the same with image cards. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a visual prompt mm -hmm. to enable our students to recall the vocabulary. It, it is, it is, we're not teaching two languages here. It is, it is as we said many times, it is, we're not teaching a sign language. We're using the signs, the, the gestures as image cards in the same way as you would use a visual in your classroom at any time. And as Jen said, thanks, Jen, there are so many studies that support this. So many studies. So many studies. Oh, my gosh. Can I, can I just do a little demonstration? Okay. So, okay. This is my mother tongue. <laughs> okay. Sveiks visi. Sveiks visi. Kā iet. Labi. Vai slikti. Okay. So imagine you're in a classroom 
and the teacher is speaking in the target language. And you had no idea. You have no idea what I said. That's my mother tongue. So now I'm going to attach a gesture to it. Bake. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Ka. Yeah. Shoidian. Today, Shoidian. Lobby. Bye. Lobby. 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 Bye. Slickty. Wendy. Lobby. Lobby. Wendy. Lobby. Yeah. 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 Lobby. 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 Yes. Space. Months. Months. Bots. It. Eat. Months. Bots. It. Eat. Oh. Ah. Lobby. Yeah. Lobby. Yeah. Bits in lobby. Yeah. 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 By slick. Oh. Lobby. Lobby. So I don't speak that. A huge, <laughs> I nobody does. <laughs> that's that's lot that's Latvian. Okay. That's Latvian. <laughs> okay? that's Latvian and that is my mother tongue. So there there is a there is a a true um, demonstration of yeah. the power of gesture. And that's what we're doing with the students. So the students, when I started gesturing, you don't gesture. I want them. I want and you saw that physicality of it. And all of a sudden you attach that gesture and it has meaning in context to those students and you immediately understood. So all of a sudden the students go, oh, I understand what he or she just said. And to them, that is really important because all of a sudden they're not intimidated with, oh my goodness. And I do not ask, initially, I do not ask those students to gesture. All I want you to do is listen. And then eventually, when the students become comfortable, they're starting to uh, speak along with me. So then I do speak, speak. And then one might do a gesture, another might do a gesture. Oh, do I do it, do it, love it. And the students, if they're comfortable, we have different types of learners. We have kinesthetic learners who will automatically do those gestures. That's great because that's the way they learn. There will be other types of learners who will perhaps they need to, their auditory and their visual, and they have to look and they have to process. And so they might be quiet for a little bit, but they're processing that they're starting to understand. And then there were others who will just look and repeat, they might do not do the gestures. So within that context of the type of classroom of learners that we have, we have different types. So that's what with the gestures, it's a it's hitting all of those types of learners that that we have in a classroom. And we allow that. So we're not saying, oh, you have to do the gestures. We never say that. We never say you must do the gestures. We what we're doing is we we are eliciting that vocabulary out of them in a context so that they begin to speak naturally. And if they gesture, great, because those are the learners, those are the types of students who need those gestures to learn. But so it is It is really important to understand that the gestures are only a tool. Yes. And that tool just helps. It's like a, your laptop or your phone or whatever. It's a tool to help you. It's like a concrete object. It's like a poster. Instead of using a poster and pointing at that, we're using gestures as a tool. Thank you, Edie. That's very well said. So thank you so, thank much. You so much. Um, uh, uh, so much. So I think we have. Uh, Sorry, some echoes here. It's okay. <laughs> so thank you, thank you so much. I think um, my colleagues have understood more mm -hmm. what AIM is and how how it works. Uh, so in case of, of any questions, we'll still get back to you.
Thank you. For more clarification. Sure. Um, but we have now uh, more today's to to go deep down into the materials, read them, understand them, and uh, see how how they link with the curriculum. And we will get back to you with uh, our feedback. Okay. So in case we have anything else to ask you, we will still get back to you for more oh. questions. <laughs> and uh, we hope you you respond to our questions. The aim is to is to understand what aim is and see if it fits in our context and if we um, we can pilot it and uh, support our education system. So thank you so much. Thank you, colleagues, for your patience and uh, following attentively. And thank you, Wendy and uh, Edith and Jen for a very good presentation. Thank you. Have, have a good day. You too. Thank you, Angelique. <laughs> thank, thank you, Angelique. Thank you. Thank you.